I'm Black Chestnut. I'm Lucos. And hey, I'm Mercola. And we're Substation Gaming. And we just watched the Pokemon uh, Scarlet and Violet trailer. And now we're going to talk about it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Let's jump right into it, guys. Yeah, let's start with the uh, new Pokemon shown off. Because why not? Yeah. <laughs> Well, of course, there's the most important, who probably has the best Pokemon name in a long time, uh, Lechonk. Yeah, Lechonk. <laughs> Lechonk. It's a pig which, dude. Which, for anybody who knows a little bit of Spanish, that technically translates to the chunk. <laughs> but Olay's French, isn't? Ah, but whatever. This Pokemon's France now. But whatever. I thought it was supposed to be Spain. Oh, sorry, I meant Spain. Sorry, yeah. I apologize. Exactly. But French Lay is Gen French, 6. not Spanish. Well, well, Lay is French and Spanish. Oh, anyways. <laughs> anyways. <laughs> um, so, How do you yeah. feel about Lay Chonk? He's a pretty chonky boy. Yeah, He's a very standard animal to Pokemon translation. <laughs> yeah. I think he's well, okay. You know what? We need those Pokemon. You need the generic ones. Yeah, They're I'm important. assuming he's like supposed to be like the Diggersby, the Rattata of this game, you know? Yeah, yeah, just like the early normal type. Yep. I mean, yep. For, for a pig, he doesn't give me Tepig vibes, though, so that's good. There's actually a f decent amount of po pig Pokemon now that I think about Yeah, there actually. are a fair amount. Compared oh, to the yeah. other pig Pokemon, I guess I'm liking him more. Yeah. To be honest. <laughs> Well, I'm a big Tepig fan. Yeah. <laughs> Although, honestly, so far, none of the Pokemon they've shown off has really wowed, wowed me, honestly. Like, they're all fine. I don't dislike any of them. But none of them are giving me that, oh my god, I love it, you know, vibe, you know? <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, I'd agree there. Yeah. To be fair, a lot of the more interesting designs are, like, the weirder ones, like, in a lot of the games. Like, they, ain't show they weren't showing off Klefki in the trailers. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Despite that being the coolest Pokemon. <laughs> but uh, yeah. who else we got that's new? Uh, the one, honestly, that I'm most interested in so far has probably got to be the Olive one that they showed off. The little okay. Olive dude. I don't even remember what his name is, but he kind of looks like a Heartless from Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> <laughs> they do! They got, like, the mouth and everything. <laughs> yeah. I wonder that's what great. it's going to evolve into, because it's clearly, like, a baby form. Mm. And all the early grass... Um, ones usually evolve into something cool. Yeah, I, I, I mean, it could be anything. A plant, yeah, it could be anything. <laughs> anything that's plant related. At first glance, this Pokemon gave me like non creepy Esper vibes. <laughs> How dare you call Esper creepy? They if got the same at, eyes. If you look at the picture for Esper, that Pokemon I'm looks creepy. No, that's the first one. They look twitchy. They look twitchy. And, and... <laughs> Love so this is, this is cute, cuddly, nice Esper. Sure. But also just a belief cat. Is, is, is this one we see that's like a turtle with a spiky hat? Is that a new one? No, that's from last generation. I wasn't 100% sure. Okay, I had to double check. He's like <laughs> a snapping turtle Pokemon. He's some sort okay. of shape. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, another interesting thing is this weird looking multiplayer we see. Oh, yeah. The actual, we're talking, you're talking about the, like, the actual interactions and battles. No, no, well, no, not just that. Like, you have, like, people, like, it looks like just connect to your game and just fuck off. Yeah, maybe like, it's just... like, uh, Dark Souls. <laughs> is, is that how you're seeing it? Maybe, like, Dark Souls and Sword and Shield kind of had a. <laughs> Well, they just, like, show up and go in opposite directions. I don't know. I mean, it's a bit nothing. odd. Maybe that's just for the trailer. I, okay. Yeah, it's hard to say how it works, because they haven't explained it yet at all. But it seems to be that you can just, like, invite people to your, like, world, more or less. Kind of like Dark Souls, yeah, where you can just go people. play the game off in another corner of the world, which sounds kind of neat. I don't know. I'd probably yeah. find it really cool if, I, like, when I was a kid, like... I uh, found like the sickest thing ever, but now it's like, okay, they're here. What now? Yeah. <laughs> kind of like, like, imagine you're about to beat the game and you see somebody enter the final boss fight and just <laughs> you have to wait for them to finish in order to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that feature. Yeah, that would be hilarious. It's like, all right, well, I, I, I just grinded this game for two hours and now I have to wait for this guy to finish. I, I, I need this into words. I don't know. I, I need to see what, what they actually say about it. Like, how you interact with people i don't know you know 
I just thought of something. It would be kind of cool, you know, it wouldn't be the first time, but it would be interesting if you're, like, already in a battle and it kind of works like Wizard 101. <laughs> Where, like, you know, like, there's, there's, four, there's four slots on each side. Obviously, for a wild Pokemon, or if you're doing a trainer battle, that would kind of be an interesting concept. I could just totally be able to have them join, join in. Yeah, and then if you like, you see somebody in a battle, you can join in. Oh, I'd love more baseball variants and stuff like that. I, I, I'd actually totally dig that. I, I don't think something like that will happen, but honestly, I'd be down. Oh well, yeah, I highly doubt it. But that is like interesting concept, and if that did happen, I would, like you're saying, recall, I would definitely be down for that. I mean, they got rid of a lot of the like the weird battle multiplayer battle variants over time, haven't they? Like, um, yeah, they, they got the weird, rid like, of rotation mode. Oh, yeah. yeah, that only appeared in like Gen five and six. Yeah, yeah. there was a oh. couple others. Didn't they have? Didn't they have a, a couple others that they got? I, I can't remember off the head. Either way, I, I'd like more stuff like that. I think they got rid of triple battles. Yeah, because they literally couldn't run them anymore. Yeah, because Game no. Freak is that bad at programming games. <laughs> were they an X and Y? Because I remember they X were an X and Y, y but they enough. chugged. Like if you yeah. had th- if you had six Moltreses on the screen, the game could crash. <laughs> Which makes sense. That's hilarious. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh, I'd like something like that again. Yeah. Because I want it. would be hilarious to see the Switch uh, chug with. <laughs> <laughs> oh, while we're on the topic of like variety of battles, can we talk about the uh, the actual interactions when you do get in a battle? It seems like you know. Oh yeah, normal... you're actually in the environment. Like yeah, like you you walk into a Pokemon and you're fighting them right there. There's yeah. no like pre render or pre generated like. It, it doesn't page. do like a weird like. Uh, like Sony. It, it doesn't do a transition, transition into like a separate area where you're doing the battle. It's like you just walk into an enemy and you start fighting them, kind of like Chrono Trigger. Uh, that yeah. does it. Which is interesting because I personally haven't played a Pokemon game like that, so I don't oh, know. If I've ever had one. did it, I think. Yeah, Legends Arceus did it as well, but that was like had a lot of real time action elements. Right. Yeah. Well. So, um, like, but any, like any like RPG that does that, where it's just like you know specifically JRPGs, where it's like you transition into battle, but you don't actually transition to a separate screen. You just continue the battle where you already were. Is always like a massive, cool thing for me. Where it's just like yes, keep doing that. I love that. <laughs> I'm trying to. Think it's like my favorite thing ever. 3D right. one that does that because I can name a couple ones like Chrono Trigger and stuff, but I'm trying to think of like a 3D one. I can't even off the top of my head, actually. Because <laughs> there's the worry that you're going to start a battle and the camera's going to be stuck in a wall. I'm worried about that. <laughs> I think Dragon Quest XI kind of does it. Okay. But I can't remember hmm. exactly. Yeah, I, 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 I've never really gotten into Dragon Quest. I yeah, I've never, I've never personally. Hmm. But um, what else we got going on in this trial? We got two professors. Yes. Oh, yeah. So there's yeah. a different yeah. professor for each game. There's Cave Woman and Science Giga Chad. <laughs> no, no, no. No, it's a Cave Woman, and then it's Giga Chad in a Zero Suit Samus suit. Yeah. Why is he wearing that under what? The, what the hell so, are these professors? So the theme of the games are past and future. Okay. But they didn't want to name them past and future because that might confuse yeah. people because they're not be literally lame. taking place in the past and the future, right? They're just themes. So they named right. them Scarlet and Violet. Violet's the future one, um, and Scarlet is the past one. And we see this portrayed also in um, the legendaries as well, where the Violet legendary is this high tech dude, and yeah, uh, jetpacks and shit. And the other one, yeah. the Scarlet one, is primal and stuff. He's got, Which, he's got a wheel coming out of his freaking yeah. chest. And while we're talking about the legendaries and stuff, uh, they're both motorcycles. Yeah. Is that what they are? Okay. So wait, you got yeah. okay. I was I'm glad it wasn't just me. Yeah, they're, they're motorcycles. Def- <laughs> <laughs> I was, the first thing that you know got me, I was like, okay, this guy has jetpacks. And I was like, wait, are they motorcycles? Yes, they are motorcycles. So they will probably effects, transform giant... into motorcycles. They're and then jealous. you get to have Pokemon battles on motorcycles. 
Oh my god! <laughs> oh, that'd be sick, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a battle variant we need, like, racetrack battles. Yeah. <laughs> Is this uh is this the Yu-Gi-Oh uh bridge yeah. series where they're just fl- 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 yeah, yeah, card games? No, no, yeah, it's five yeah. Ds was the one where they're on motorcycles. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. GX yeah, yeah. was the one where they were good at the card game high school. Okay. <laughs> but what is Zexel about? That's the one with the shadow the hedgehog. They were at kids, a right? regular high school and they just happened to play card games there. But there was also like space aliens that possessed people or something like that. Man, why can't Pokemon stories be this? I don't cool? remember what five V's was. No, not five V's. V Rains. V Rains? No, V Rains was the one where they went uh into VR chat and played card games. Um <laughs> Arc Five, I think it was called. Was the one I didn't watch. That was the one that introduced pendulum summoning. Ugh. And I don't know what that one's about, because I never watched it. <laughs> Uh, let's get off of the Yu-Gi-Oh, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Back to Pokemon. They're close I don't know enough. how I feel about these legendaries. They feel faked. Like, they I look at them, and, like, they weird. look like bootleg like Pokemon. They don't, they don't necessarily look ugly. They don't look they like just... bootleg like Pokemon, but they definitely, I wish, you know, I, like, I wish they would not make the legendary Pokemons in the most recent games just virtually the same Pokemon, but slightly different, you know, type. Yeah, I get what they're going with this one, and it's you know I like the the theme of it, like future and past, but they they virtually look the same thing with different colors. They're yeah. a little similar. They go for a motif. But I can what, get that. But one's yeah. got a wheel sticking out their chest, and one's got jetpacks on their ass. Like <laughs> yeah, and they also have a wheel sticking out of their chest. It's just a cyber wheel. Ooh. Oh, I didn't see that. Okay, okay. Yeah. See, yeah. there you go. Cyber wheel. Yeah, but I mean, but, it's they definitely look cool. They at first, like when I first saw them, they almost gave me like toxicity vibes on crack. That's the best way to put it. it. Yeah, I don't know. That's from just what cool. I heard. But, uh, the reason why they're going for like the motorcycle theming is because apparently. This is what I've heard. I don't know if this is actually true or not, but like Spain has a big motorcycle culture where there, okay. there's a lots of motorcycle fans in Spain, basically. Oh, 100%. It's like a big thing in there. I don't yeah. know about it because I'm not a big Spain guy. All I know about <laughs> Spain is that they really love and hate their bulls. Yes. It's, it is a love-hate relationship thing, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, um, yeah, I definitely like the theme of this. Um, but yeah, there's definitely things that could be touched up, you know. Um, we were briefly talking about it before we actually started recording, but Black Chestnut, you were mentioning something about the actual environment, and I definitely agreed that the environment yeah. definitely looks, you know, they kind of cheaped out yeah, on it. Yeah, the almost. environment does not look great. Like and, and they the had that Sorted Shield was kind of ugly, but there was a few areas in like the trailer and stuff that were like, oh, the area has some nice... Direction, yeah, there's a few towns good. that look nice, but yeah, if and it, a lot of the field nothing. areas look bad. Yeah, th- this has shown nothing aside from field. <laughs> really. yeah, yeah, like I really that's that's what I was just about to say. Like I don't even think we saw any towns really. We just kind of saw like interactions between NPCs. You I know they showed off some towns in the first trailer. Yeah, even then, I don't know. They didn't, they didn't really blow my mind. No, nothing. I don't know. Like, I mean, uh, they are going for a little bit of a different approach with this one, slightly, but at the same time, like, yeah, you would think after that, Arceus. Yeah, you would think after Arceus, they would, you know, have at least stepped up the budget for basic <laughs> grass textures. Yeah, it, honestly, it could look a lot better, and it's a bit disappointing to me that uh, the Pokemon company keeps wanting to cheap out so much on their mainline titles, you know? yeah. Uh, it's disappointing because they have the money. They could just make it yeah. look better, and they just choose to spend <laughs> as little amount of money as they possibly can because they know it will sell gangbusters anyway. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and that's that's the sad part because they could like push out a Pokemon game that looks you know phenomenal, has great gameplay, you know, add something new every generation. <laughs> so we're not just getting an updated roster with you know what is it like. How many Pokemon do they usually add every every you game? Give them of gameplay. They're trying. They've, they've been trying at gameplay the last few generations to shake things up. 
to the detriment sometimes honestly i mean to be fair this one is shaking up quite a bit because this is going to be the first fully open world one they didn't really show it off in the trailer but they did say it on twitter that this one's going to be fully open world and apparently it's non-linear as well which is really cool in my mind interesting oh i did not know that though yeah Sword and Shield, uh, yeah, they tried touching an open world by having to one big open field, like, in the middle, but, yeah. yeah it, was, it was just it was kind of an happen. open area. It was more of a Hyrule field than anything, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they were like, I don't know, should we go all in or not? Then they just like, okay, we'll do, try a spin-off where we go all in open world and see how that goes. And, yeah, I guess Arceus is well-received enough. Yeah. So we're like, okay, mainline now. <laughs> yeah, from what we saw up until Arceus was revealed, just to go on a little side note, it actually wasn't that bad from what i've heard i haven't played it personally but i've heard a lot of people liked arceus yeah i heard a lot of people liked arceus i didn't bother to get it because it wasn't (laughs) what i wanted yeah yeah Uh, besides arceus i don't really think i kind of disagree with your statement ricola i don't think they've really been doing too much different or you know they try like the like the trials and sun and moon they try to shake up like the gym formula and then they were like the certain shield they try to do like the field and this uh they, they they're kind of half measures but at the same time i understand the pokemon has a very set formula that works and i don't think anyone dislikes the pokemon formula it's definitely <laughs> one of the, it's definitely one of those if it's not broken don't fix it type of deals though I agree yeah, that. yeah that's what i think's been their mindset right yeah. Which in a I sense, mean, I guess it is me, working. For me personally, right, uh, I don't really feel like they need to change the formula that much. I just wish they would spend more money on the games, you know? <laughs> yeah, I yeah, just yeah, wish polished. that they'd have yeah, like they... higher quality overall. Like, I don't want them to change anything, to be honest. I just want them to stop cutting, like, corners, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, same. Like, like I was saying, like, I don't think anyone really has a problem with the Pokemon formula, I think they're just changing it out of expectation more than anything. Like, yeah, they- <laughs> like the thing that like makes me the most angry from like the new Pokemon games is how Game Freak has decided they want to cut core features from the game and then try to sell them back to us at a premium. Yeah, with like Pokemon Home and stuff. Like, it's not just the national decks, which is pretty scummy. Where it's just like, yeah, you can't. Tr- like in order to transfer the Pokemon, use global tra- and use the GTS, the global trade system, which was a core feature in like all of the previous games from Gen Four to Gen like seven. In like, right. you know, yeah. in Gen Eight, they were and like they, it out, they took it say. out from the game and then they at- put it on the Pokemon Home and locked it behind a paywall. You have to spend fifteen dollars extra dollars now if you want to like use the gts and to me yeah. that's that's ridiculous that's insane yeah oh, yeah that's that's terrible and uh, that's like really egregious yeah especially when you know like you're saying like just they got they got what they need down with pokemon just make it perfect yeah yeah polish yeah. and it's no, like no, at this point, it doesn't they're... even need to be perfect it just needs to feel better than what it currently is and another thing that's really annoying to me is how they just don't have like any voice acting like to me that's just another sign of how cheap they are you know where it's just I... like where's the voice acting like come on this is a 60 dollar uh... triple a game in the year 2022 right where's the voice acting come on you know Ratchet and Clank was fully voice voice acted in 2001. All of the Sonic games have had full voice acting, despite the fact that they are like shoestring budgets, you know? Yeah. It's like, where is it? Like, come on. You're telling me that the most profitable franchise in the world can't afford to have voice acting, despite the fact that they already have voice actors contracted for all of these characters, considering that, like, they all appear in the anime. They oh, all man. are fully voiced there in every single language. They dub the anime in every single language, so why can't they have voice acting in the games? It's because they don't want to spend the extra money because they're cheap. Yeah, I you mean, uh, it, I'm fine if, like, voice acting for, like, the majority of, like, random text and stuff, like, just random like, NPCs. It doesn't need to be fully voiced. I don't need the random yeah, NPCs, yeah. but, like, during the cutscenes and the main story, yeah, 
that should yeah, be fucking voiced, you know? Especially yeah. my character. I would, at least, like, my character and, like, you're saying, the main... The main... Mark text. Like, I don't right. need, like, the main character to talk at all, like, because they're always yeah. the silent protagonists. That's fine. But, like, the surrounding main cast should be voiced, you know? Like, the champion should say something cool before you fight them. <laughs> Especially during cutscenes and stuff. I don't think there's anything, like, more insane than watching, like, the opening cutscene of Sword and Shield and seeing the characters, like, lips moving like they're talking, and then no audio comes out. <laughs> it's like, it looks unfinished. It, like, you yeah. know, it sounds unfinished. Looks unprofessional, too. Yeah. Because it is. Pokemon it is. is unprofessional. It's because they're cheap. <laughs> you know? Like, I, I don't really agree with the people saying they're lazy, right? It's not because they're lazy. It's because they're cheap. They don't want to spend the money. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Get... Yeah. Um... They're not even frugal. They're just cheap. <laughs> yeah, I don't... Any, anything else you really want to say on this? I mean, you know... so it oh, is yeah. very pro It's very promising for what we saw. But it's uh... definitely... Uh, there's a lot of work that needs to be done, but that's... <laughs> I guess inevitable with every Pokemon game now. Yeah. I mean, like, let's be real here. It's not going to look any different at launch. Oh, no. 100%. <laughs> it's like it comes out this year. They're not going to change anything. All the issues that the game has now are still going to be there. It's not going to have the national decks, and it's going to charge you extra for transferring your Pokemon from the using Pokemon Home, and all those features are still going to be locked behind that paywall. And to me, that's like really shitty and you know yeah. um and i'm not sure if i'm gonna get this game to be honest i might yeah i'm this you is you did eventually get sorted shield right i did yeah, i got it was... a year after it came out i bought it like used and i also bought the dlc and i really wish i didn't because all i did was play through the first half of the first dlc <laughs> and then never touched the second dlc at all <laughs> <laughs> which i that was one of the only things that i really liked about sword and shield and it shouldn't be with any game, you shouldn't like the game based off of the DLC. <laughs> you should like the game a lot and then want to get the DLC because of how good the game was. Yeah. I got the DLC as a gift, and I liked the the whole max layer thing where you can randomly go through a series of trials and, you know, catch a random legendary at the end. That was an interesting concept to me, but that was DLC-based. Like, that was one of my favorite things about the game. That should not be the case. Yeah, it's usually not a good sign. If my uh, DLC is that much stronger, when I mean, you find it that much stronger than the base game. <laughs> right, like, yeah. I probably put a solid 25 hours into Pokemon, if that. I put an extra 10 hours after getting the DLC, just playing yeah. the DLC. <sighs> like, that's almost half the time I spent playing the actual is, game. Is and... the DLC better than releasing just a third game, though? I kind of think that... The third game thing was like if somehow even scummier because <laughs> you can only imagine you know like how similar it would be to either sword and shield or just how lazy they would have been well not lazy oh. like you're saying not lazy but you know half-assed in a sense yeah, well, yeah. i mean like because what okay what's the third legendary they're gonna put in there they're gonna make eternatus the actual main legendary in that uh even though Eternatus is just the main well, villain. I, mean, I, mean, I, I think even like in the past, like the third games, like even like Emerald and Platinum, as much as they add, they are still pretty much just selling you the same game a second time in its exactly. entirety. Like, I never understood so that. that. They didn't do that again. Yeah, they couldn't get away with it like in this day and age, you know, charging yeah. $60 for it for like the same game. Yeah, really yeah. Much. I, it's like they can do that. I'm surprised they got away with it for as long as they did. <laughs> I think going with the DLC was the better approach for sure. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. As you can see, I you know putting almost roughly about half the time I spent in the regular game in the DLC. I definitely <laughs> think that was a better move. Yeah. But you know, but, um, you know let's just wrap this up with no, the most important wait, question. Wait. There was one oh, okay. thing we forgot to do, which was okay. we missed one of the new Pokemon at the very beginning of this <laughs> this discussion oh, we oh my forgot God. we didn't talk about the new pikachu clone oh my gosh how, do, how can we forget it's like a mole thing what it, what is it it has like <laughs> i think he's supposed to be a chinchilla it has like jigglypuff hair we already have a chinchilla pokemon no no don't replace uh Cincino or whatever <laughs> no it's i hate to keep comparing but um the this Pokemon looks like Cinderace and uh Teddy Ursa had a kid. 
like the little tuft on his head and then he looks I, like I see it. I see what I see what you're saying, yeah. <laughs> He's cute. He is cute he, though. He is, all the like Pikachu he's, clones are cute. He's got a cute little face, you know, he's got the, you know, the... He's cute. P Pikachu is kind of like a perfect design, except for Emolga, which finally one up Pikachu. Uh, I wouldn't say one up, based. but Emolga is really... Emolga's cooler. Is, yeah, you can't forget about Emolga. No, uh, Emolga's not cooler. They got the the color scheme, the like the black, white, and yellow is really, really nice. It looks cool. They're a flying squirrel. Uh, they're cool. They're very cool. I don't even remember the one from Sword and Shield. I don't either. I don't think was I was. Oh no, I'm thinking of this. I, the little rat one's Sun and Moon, right? Uh, which one? Little... They're all little rat ones. You gotta be more specific <laughs> yeah, than I, that. Yeah, I was gonna say. Um, <laughs> very you can't be more specific. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I I do like how they do just rip off Pikachu every game. I mean, it's the Sun and Moon one, I think that was the one that was like a it was Sonic, it was a porcupine, I think. <laughs> oh, no, he was a hedgehog. Okay, Sonic, Sonic to porcupine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but okay, if we got all the topics because I have to ask the most important question of. If you get it, which starter are you picking? I'm picking Donald Duck. Oh, uh, he looks like he has toothpaste on his head. No way. I think it's a Yeah, ah. he's Rousey from Deltarune. He's toothpaste boy. I, I, I gotta go with Weed Cat. I was gonna weed, go with Weed Cat. Weed Cat's pretty good. <laughs> we can both go Weed Cat and see who has the better build. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Poor. I wonder what they're gonna evolve into. Oh, yeah. The the starters are always a uh, no clue what they're gonna evolve into. They can get wild sometimes. Like, I don't know, chestnut or whatever. What yeah, the heck right. is he? He's First a knight. Into... Oh yeah, he's a chestnut kind of like... knight. Dude, Gen Six starters are awesome. I love all of them. Yeah, there was like a black mage, a knight, and a ninja. Way better yeah, than but... Sword and Shield starters, who I hated all of them. Well, not <laughs> hated, but I didn't like any of them enough to use them. <laughs> you know, I, I like. I, I like boxed the... my starter in Short and Shield. I was like, oh, that's so "You're sad. lame." I'm using the squirrel Pokemon that I caught in the first <laughs> route instead. He's my new starter. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I, I like so the uh, the squirrel I, was I, cuter. I, I boxed Cinderace as soon as I got uh, Urshifu. Oh. oh, I liked Urshifu better because you know I actually felt like I had to connect with my Pokemon based off of like the actual um. That camping system where you can feed them and play with them and all that. Yeah. Oh yeah. They actually made it seem like there was a purpose to doing that besides just doing that just to do it because it was there. I mean, the and reason that... why you do that is because it boosts their affection stat, and if you have their affection stat high enough, they start cheating. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. Yeah. They they added this in Gen Six. It's one of the reasons why every generation after six has been insanely easy, is because the affection stat is just broken, where it just Ma makes you win the game automatically is that is that what it is okay yeah yeah so how it works is you just play with them right you pet them you feed them food it raises their affection stat once it's maxed out um the odds of them doing like their crit chance increases they have extra dodge chance like evasion rate even though they shouldn't have any um they can sometimes just have sturdy as a hidden ability Automatically, so where, just a lot of stats. yeah, where effectively it's like if they would have died to a hit, it's like they just don't, yeah, they just so like, you're telling me, you're and telling every, me. you know, it's the affection set whenever it happens because it, an extra text pop would be, um, is like they landed a critical hit because they loved you so much, or they didn't want to make <laughs> you cry, so they didn't faint, something like that. <laughs> that's great, yeah, you're telling that's me awesome. Ash, Ash Ketchum, you know, raised his Pikachu affection stat to the max. No, they, Pikachu nah, they, they hate each other for the first season, though, don't they? Exactly, but that's how every Pokemon is going to be. It's a wild, it's a wild animal in that world. <laughs> so they're, they're by default going to not like you unless it's a naturally, you know, tame species. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And Pikachu, man. Pikachu is an electric weasel. Asshole. It's not a weasel. <laughs> He's a mouse. Yeah, we have a weasel Pokemon. It's called. Is that a uh, man or a mouse? He's both. But anyway, 
So it is, uh, it was called Distorted Shield. Uh, what's this yeah. game called again? Uh, Scarlet Violet. Scarlet and Violet. Uh, yeah, I guess that's yeah. it. Yeah, but definitely uh, drop a comment letting us know what you guys think. And then... Um, yeah, tell us what you think of Pokemon. We want to know. In general. Which side are you picking? Which one did you like? That's, tell us. Is, it, is the duck going to evolve into a giant toothbrush? <laughs> 